Hello, this is Sam Kennedy from VCU Technology Services. I'm sitting here with Mark Willis, CIO of VCU Technology Services, to talk a little bit about the announcement that was made this morning for the VCU community about a security incident uh, concerning a server down at the uh, VCU Computer Center. Um, Mark, the information is out on the website in regards to what actually happened, so I guess I want to talk a little bit more about what's, what is different about this intrusion versus others that have happened in the past. Well, Sam, we discovered the intrusion on October 24th, and we found that one of our servers had been infected by an Internet worm. Uh, after the infection, some intruders got into the server and established a couple of files and accounts on the server. And it was apparent that they were using it as a platform to scan for other uh, vulnerable machines on the Internet, as well as use it as a platform for what's called a command and control network to control botnets, which is a network of infected machines on the internet. Now, hackers will use botnets to do things like send spam or try to find other uh, infected or vulnerable machines on the internet for nefarious purposes. Okay, so they weren't really, we don't feel like they were trying to actually get at any kind of data. They were trying to set up a platform to launch other attacks, essentially. Yes, we, we did some very extensive forensic analysis on, on this server and then a second server uh, that we found. Uh, and it really was very apparent to us that they were using it for a platform. We did not believe that their intent was to access uh, personal data of our students, faculty, and staff. So was personal data stolen? I think that's what's on a lot of people's mind. No, our investigation uh, did not show that the data was stolen. We were able to track the activities of the intruders, and the second server uh, that had the personal data on it was accessed only for a very short period of time. It was 16 minutes on one day, and we were able to detect that the intruders had established two accounts, had loaded some files on that server, but no other activities. So we cannot trace that they even knew that the files were there or tried to access those files. What, um, what kind of data was exposed? It was uh, name information, social security, uh, EID uh, for each of the individuals, and in some cases there was uh, contact information, home addresses, work addresses, uh, what department the individual either worked in or the major of the student. Why, uh, okay, why was that kind of data on there? Because uh, if, if I remember correctly, this was uh, data that is was not only shared internally, but was also shared with the VCU Health System, right? Yes, this, uh, these particular files were used to transfer data between various systems within the university and the health system. Oh where uh, they were used for various different purposes. It was mainly identity data to make sure that uh, employees could uh, access uh, facilities, uh, the VCU card, uh, for example, data like that was transferred back and forth, uh, or for parking benefits or, uh, or health benefits. Okay. Um, Who is being contacted and, and how are we contacting folks? Uh, we identified 176,000 individuals uh, who had records on those 10 files. Uh, they're both current and former students, faculty, staff, and affiliates. And we're, we're contacting them in a couple of different ways. First, we sent out a broadcast email to all of those individuals, and we did that last night. We are following that up with first-class uh, first mails uh, to those uh, individuals as well, to their home or their work address. We've also uh, published a very detailed website uh, on the, the technology services website, which has a lot of FAQs if individuals have questions about what happened. And then finally, we've established a, a security incident information center with a toll-free number that individuals can call. They can talk to one of the staff here and have their questions answered. So we're going through, we've gone through the investigation over the last uh, week or so. Um, which led to us making the announcement this this morning. What what are some of the next steps for this process now for this in, intrusion event? I know the uh, servers are back online because they've been uh, hardened, you know, so that something like this can't happen again. So what's the next steps uh, through this process for VCU? Well, we are continuing the investigation. Uh, we've involved the VCU police and the FBI are now involved. We have given them all of the evidence that we were able to collect, and they are continuing that investigation. Uh, for example, we know that the uh, internet uh, addresses uh, of the attackers were from outside VCU. So they're following up with that evidence and, and continuing this as a criminal investigation. 
Uh, internally, we have taken a number of steps to identify and fix the vulnerabilities which allowed the uh, internet worm infection in the first place. We've also added some additional layers of security around these servers and changed the security architecture uh, a bit to uh, provide a little bit more protection. Uh, the final thing that we're doing is we, we will be doing a, a top to bottom assessment. We will be bringing in a, an outside consultant to look at our security uh, uh, architecture here, our security procedures, to make sure we're following best practices and are protecting universities' uh, information and uh, uh, technology assets the best we can. Anything else you want to let people know about before we move on to Dan? Well, we certainly understand uh, the concerns of, of students, faculty, and staff about this incident. Um, but we feel very certain that the da their data was not exposed. Uh, we have tracked what the intruders did on the machines. And uh, we feel very comfortable that data was not exposed in this incident. All right. Well, thank you very much. Next up will be Dan Hamm. Okay, this is Sam Kennedy. We're back uh, now talking with Dan Han, who is the Information Security Officer for VCU. Uh, we spoke with uh, Mark Willis a little bit earlier, Dan, and he told us we went over the, uh, the, the, the whole process and the incident um, for, the, for the server breach a little bit with us. But we want to talk to you because you kind of were the person in there digging around and once the, 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 the breach, I guess, or not was really the breach, the intrusion was, was found, you guys did the actual investigation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure. Um, so we were initially uh, notified of the uh, incident on October 24th, mm -hmm. um, 2011. And um, once we were notified of the incident, we went ahead and uh, disconnected the server immediately and uh, uh, proceeded to uh, uh, obtain a forensic uh, copy of the hard drive uh, on the server. So uh, once we finished uh, doing that, uh, we went ahead and uh, conducted some forensic ana analysis on the server itself. And during this uh, whole entire analysis uh, phase, uh, we actually found that um, the attacker may have used this server to breach another server. So once we found that, uh, we went ahead and dis disconnected the second server, also took a forensic image of that server as well, and uh, proceeded to uh, uh, conduct a forensic ana analysis to uh, determine the scope of the incident uh, as well as uh, uh, any type of information uh, that could have been uh, compromised. Um, so I guess uh, uh, that's that's a brief synopsis of uh, what went on uh, when, we, uh, uh, when we were notified of the incident. And that takes time, I think, because it was in, towards the end of October when you guys were um, notified. We just now today on uh, the 11th of November put the notification out because that forensic process takes time. The, that, that is absolutely correct, Sam. Uh, the, the, the forensic process uh, takes quite a bit of time because we want to make sure that we are diligent and uh, we find the most accurate and uh, uh, correct information so that we can uh, uh, determine whether if any information was breached and how did the attackers get in and uh, uh, so on and so forth. And also, you know, we, we need to make sure that we, uh, we completely understand uh, what information are really out there uh, on these servers. Um, so in that case, we'll have to work with other business units, uh, for instance, the server owners as well as the server administrators to determine uh, 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 those uh, aspects uh, of, the, of the business. Okay, all right. So we've gone through that process. Um, Mark had talked about we've re-architectured a little bit and, and hardened those servers a little bit more, so they're back up and operational now. Um, I'm someone that I've gotten the notice on, actually, I probably will get the notice actually on uh, regards to this uh, this intrusion um, what can I do to protect myself well that's a great question Sam uh, what can we all do to protect ourselves uh, from identity theft uh, for, first of all I would like to stress that um, through our forensic analysis we believe that um, there's a very low risk of anybody's data being compromised uh, uh, because I mean it, it, at least from the evidence that we saw it just really seems like the attacker wasn't after the data. Right. And also the data didn't seem like they were accessed or exfiltrated from the server. Um, but uh, co coming back to your question, Sam, uh, how can we protect ourselves? Uh, first of all, uh, there's a free uh, fraud alert that anybody can uh, put on their accounts. And uh, in order to do that, you can go ahead and contact uh, one of the three credit reporting bureaus. Uh, they will be able to put a, a, a fraud alert on your on your account for 90 days. 
And those three uh, bureaus are listed on the uh, security uh, incident site that the URL should be coming up uh, here on screen. I believe you go to the What Should I Do link on that site, and that's one of the first pieces of information that's presented up. That is correct. Um, so in, in addition to the, to the fraud alerts, uh, you can also uh, get an annual credit report uh, for free from uh, all three bureaus. Uh, you can go to annualcreditreport.com. Uh, to uh, uh, to receive your free credit report uh, uh, every year. So, and uh, uh, some of the things that you want to look for in, inside of those reports are any unknown accounts uh, that may be open in your name. Uh, and if you do see those type of things, it is good to contact the creditors and uh, make sure that you know this this is a legit account. And if it's le illegitimate, then you know you have to uh, uh, contact the police and make sure that uh, um, that you file a claim as a uh, uh, possible victim of a. Uh, uh, identity theft. All right. Okay. Okay, Dan, thanks for taking time to talk to us. I know you've got a lot still going on with regards to the incident. Um, for anyone that is looking for more information, we will continue to post updates on the main technology services website as well as on the incident website um, as we move forward. Feel free to contact us at the Security Incident Information Center, um, and how to do so will be on that, that incident website. Um, thanks and take care.